This is my favorite energy visualization. It captures the entire United States energy system. It's awesome, isn't it? On the left, you have the energy fuels. The green are renewables, the black are fossil fuels, and the red is nuclear. On the right, you have energy consumption in pink. Electricity generation serves as an intermediary between the fuels and consumption and is an orange. The two main uses of energy are electricity generation and transportation. However, these two are not very well linked. Just look at the inputs to electricity generation and look at the inputs to transportation. The fuels aren't the same and hardly any electricity goes into transportation. I think we should change that. And I think that if we electrify transportation, it will lead to a more resilient and sustainable energy system. Your first thought might be this is an old idea because electric vehicles have no tailpipe emissions and could be powered by clean electricity. While this is true, this is not the argument I am making. The argument I am making is that electrifying transportation will not only make the transportation sector more resilient and sustainable, but other aspects of the energy system as well. However, this is only possible with two clarifications about the nature of electrified transportation. First, electricity must be able to flow into and out of electric vehicles. And second, these vehicles must be self-driving. So what do I mean by flow both ways? The more complex term for this is grid integrated vehicles, or GIVs. You can see a few of the GIVs on this graphic. Think of the electricity grid as a giant seesaw with generation on one side and consumption on the other. At all instances of time, this seesaw has to be perfectly balanced in order for the grid to work. The entity that maintains that balance is the independent system operator, or ISO. GIVs are a powerful tool for the ISO because they can send energy into or take energy away from the GIVs in order to help keep the grid balanced. In fact, the New York Times reported that the owner of the GIV could be paid $1,800 a year for this service, while the extra equipment costs would be $400. While the flexibility of GIVs are important in today's grid, they would be invaluable in the future, because in the future, power plants will produce when the wind blows and when the sun shines. To see the implications of this shift, my team and I analyzed the electric grid in the mid-Atlantic region of the United States. We simulated 28 billion combinations of land-based wind, offshore wind, solar and storage options over four years to come up with the least cost renewable electric grid. Let's take a, let's take a look at the, some of the results of the cheapest option. This is a heat map. It captures information for every hour of the day for a single year. You can probably tell I'm a data visualization nerd, right? So a heat map works like this. The bottom of the graph is the start of the day and the top of the graph is the end of the day. The left of the graph is the start of the year, and the right of the graph is the end of the year. So the middle portion of the graph are the summer months, and the edges are the winter months. And going from top to bottom, the bottom is the start of the day, and the top is the end of the day. So this particular heat map is a solar power production. As you would expect, there's no production at night, the bottom and the top of the graph. You can also see that production peaks midday. Our simulation picked the most cost-effective combination of solar, offshore wind, and land-based wind. When we added these together in the mid-Atlantic region of the United States, this is what the total renewable energy production patterns look like. So the first thing you'll notice is that it's relatively stable, except that in that middle portion of the graph this summer, there's a slight dip. Now that we saw the production patterns, let's take a look at this one. This one is the renewable, or this one is the electricity consumption patterns for the mid-Atlantic region of the United States for a single year. You'll see those summer months again jump out at you, but this time it's higher consumption. And you can also see that in the winter months, there's another spike in consumption. And the fall and spring months have relatively little electricity use. So in a future electricity system, we're really going to have to transform that renewable energy production which is in the top left here, 
to match that consumption in the bottom right and really keep that seesaw balanced in order for the grid to work. GIVs are the key to doing this. Through our simulation, we found that we could have a 99.9% .9 renewable electric grid with costs comparable to today if we included GIVs in the simulation. If we instead used large centralized batteries, those costs would almost double. So let's shift gears for a second. Here you can see an early version of a self-driving or autonomous vehicle. Many companies are working feverishly to perfect this technology. While there are many, many very good aspects of self-driving vehicles by themselves, I would like to explore a new one. What if we had autonomous grid-integrated vehicles? To explore this, let me tell you the story of John. And yeah, John kind of looks like a hippie version of me, but it was the best I could do. So John works at the local hospital and has just finished his shift. He walks outside and unplugs his electric car and it drives him home. Once home, he plugs in his car. But instead of starting to charge right away, it instead sends energy back to the grid and gets paid for it. Then it waits till 11 p.m. when the offshore wind is expected to pick up to start charging. This makes it cheaper for John to charge his car. This offshore wind also would have been wasted without electric vehicles. The next morning, John arrives at work. He plugs in his car, and minutes later, a storm knocks out grid power to the hospital. Immediately, John's car, as well as others in the lot, send backup power from the car batteries to the hospital to keep it online. Also, a rideshare company sends a fleet of autonomous electric vehicles to the site to provide additional backup power. This fleet of vehicles from the rideshare company provides backup power for two weeks for the hospital to keep it online. Imagine a world without fossil fuels and where backup power is available wherever there is a parking lot. This world is possible, but only if electricity can flow both ways in smart, autonomous electric vehicles. Thank you.